Welcome back, Zero K fans, to another exhibition match. This is, once again, for the tournament tomorrow. Well, in anticipation of the tournament tomorrow, just sort of having it up. I mean, this is a normal cast. But we are going over players who are going to be in the tournament on Saturday, not tomorrow. I keep saying tomorrow. It's not tomorrow, it's Saturday. So it'll feel like tomorrow for me, in a way. Orphelius. Orphelius is the one who's playing. Ikins is their opponent in this particular match. They are not playing in the tournament. Or at least they haven't signed up for it yet. Ikins, if you're watching this, please feel free to sign up in the 1v1 tournament on Saturday. It's going to be fun. I mean, you're in the proper time zone for it, too. But anyway, whether or not they do, I guess will come down to whether or not they want to. But at this point, they haven't. So for the do, let's get to the game. It's going to be on Ravaged, or is on Ravaged, or Philly's going for Shieldbot in the northeast side of the map, and Ikin's going for Cloakybot in the southwest side of the map. And Ravaged is, as we've seen several times before, because I enjoy casting this map, we saw in the tournament last time, several times too, like last couple tournaments, it is a map that supports pretty much any factory. So when you see Cloakie versus Shield, it's actually a little bit surprising, because that doesn't come up a whole lot. Because any matchup can happen, Cloakie versus Shield is kind of a matchup that happens all the time. It's sort of the stock matchup, as it were. But no, in this case, we have something completely different. Cloakie vs. Shield in a map where I haven't seen Cloakie vs. Shield in months. See Jump Bot, I see Hovercraft, I see Gunships. But Cloakie vs. Shield. Not a common thing. So anyway, Orphelius is going for a few bandits up front. Primarily for defense, though. They are not raiding with the early bandits, which is a little bit surprising. Normally, when you have three bandits like this, it's because you want to raid, but not in this case. While Ikins, on the other hand, has a glaive. Oh, Dirtbag as well, for scouting purposes. Yeah, <laughs> Orphelius is apparently scared because they are not moving forward with the bandits. While glaives are coming up as well, but the glaives do lose to bandits one on one. In this case, it's three on one, so the glaive actually doing quite well there. That was nicely done by Ikins, getting that damaged bandit, actually managing to kill it first. While well, Dirtbag raiding out the... Well, gets <laughs> destroyed by a laser, but still raiding out that metal extractor. That Dirtbag stayed alive way too long. So Ikins basically on the back foot. Orphelius can easily push through with these bandits. I mean, yeah, that was one bandit that died, but that was three glaives. The bandits still win. At this point, the base is not easily assailable, but the tenants... This commander, I think, probably would be. And the Glaive's gonna be coming out once again. The Bandits should be going for it. Orphelius is just gonna be attacking directly. Same time, expanding. I mean, both players are expanding over to their natural expansions. Furthest north and furthest south. It's not too unusual. And of course, the main base is also being set up. Orphelius is slightly ahead in terms of energy. They've built more power plants in the meantime, and they are just overall ahead. Although, Ikens is slightly ahead in metal, but only slightly. However, Ikens also got a bit of a position advantage. These glaives, three glaives coming in here. There's a roach that might be able to stop them. It gets in the right position. And it is in the right position. The glaives have to go right through that roach, but they will be able to kill this convict first. Bandit trying to stop that. And Orphelius, no, Orphelius is moving these bandits back. And I say no because these bandits could have moved forward. Seven bandits are not necessary to go to the glaives. These two bandits are all that's needed. I mean, really, that convict, if it retreats, that's fine. That convict can get out of there. But those bandits could have gone for a very heavy assault, which Ikens can now prepare for, and Ikens pretty much has prepared for. These lotuses would stop it. Although, actually, this lotus down here, not so much. Orphelius can attack this south side, and it will be a win. It would be a very solid victory for Orphelius. And between the reclaim and all his new energy, well, Orphelius... Orphelius needs to build caretakers. They need to build up some more units. This factory should not be idle. No reason that factory should be idle. But it is. That factory has... Okay, there we go. No longer idle. Getting more bandits. But there needs to be some caretakers there. Orphelius is starting to excess. Orphelius is, is not building enough. Just morph the commander. That that will work. Morph the commander. At least get that out of the way. Get that metal to stop being in storage. Especially when there's reclaim happening. Not so bad when it's metal from extractors. I mean, it's still a bit of a waste. But it's not as bad. However, Orphelius has set up some workers that will work. And I can commander... Heavy machine gun on a recon chassis. Now the recon chassis will probably not be enough to survive and oh nice the bandit just out of field of view and down goes Iken's commander early on in the game early enough that it actually does matter. That's about a third of the energy economy and Orphelius has taken that out losing a lot of their bandits in the process though. So taking out the rest of this area down here is not going to happen yet. 
However, at the same time, Orphelius did expand over to the north center, but Eichen's expanding over to the west. And Orphelius knows nothing about this. Orphelius has no idea of this expansion. While Eichen's, on the other hand, also has no idea of Orphelius' expansion. So both players are in the dark about what the other is doing. But the important thing is that Orphelius is still slightly ahead. They still have an advantage for metal. They've gotten the caretaker up, and Eichen's not yet got a caretaker, got enough workers to make up for them. The workers will... These are acting as a caretaker. Eichen's, however, does need to build up using all their workers. They're actually... They've gotten slowed down a bit, thanks to losing that commander. And some glaives trying to deal with the bandits over the top. They are going to go down, though. Taking out a metal extractor in the process. Actually, taking out two metal extractors. In fact, get, doing a lot of damage. Getting rid of this entire expansion in the center. Although this one Lotus will be the death of them. That was still a lot of damage dealt before they went down, finally. And that Lotus... Man, that tried, but it's not quite enough. I mean, sorry, the glaives tried, but they weren't quite enough. The Lotus did a, good, did a fine job killing all the glaives. That much is certain. Now, Eikens is... Well, they've gone past the raiding stage into riots. Gone straight to riots. Not quite consolidation yet, but still, they have decided they cannot out-micro Orphelius. They're just going to go for out-brute force. Now, Orphelius, on the other hand, they have morphed their commander. Light Particle Beam Auto Repair makes sense on the Recon Chassis, so they are not accessing. However, Eikens, Eikens needs more energy. Fortunately, the wind generators are not being quite enough. Needs to get solar plants instead. Focusing all of their build power on the solar plants here. Or almost all of it. There's a bit more being built here. Yeah, there's metal extractors being built over in the southeast. And power plants being built in the main base. But this is giving Orphelius a lot more time. Because at this point, Orphelius is still ahead. Now, Orphelius, in terms of army value, in terms of actual raw army value, discounting the commander, is slightly behind Icons. Very slightly. Like, the commander is one. It's fifteen hundred. So Orphelius, without the commander, is actually about one point six thousand metal. But Orphelius just has, well, at this point, defender's advantage. Has a couple roaches re at the ready. Actually, too close to each other. In fact, the thugs are also in place, but the thugs are not going to be great against the glaives. The glaives, however, do not do well against the roaches. That will certainly finish them off, and the thugs can't just get rid of the warriors at their leisure. Bandits coming up from behind to try to flank them, which will work, actually. The bandits flanking from behind. The warrior's not sure which to attack. It's really best to kill the bandits. Honestly, that would have been the best option. They would have died either way, but at least the bandits being dead would have been four fewer bandits to attack the main base, which is exactly what Orphelius is likely to do right now. Looks like Orphelius might be regrouping first, but then following that, they'll probably just go straight for the base. And that will basically kill Eikens, or at least deal a lot of damage. Not not outright kill. Not at this point. Eikens is a bit too much on the map. Eikens has actually taken pretty much the entire southwest. So for all the fighting going on, both players are still fairly even for territory. Orphelia is, however, winning out in terms of energy, thus in terms of overdrive, and also in terms of reclaim to an extent. Yeah, a lot of it is just... Actually, Orphelia, I think, must have more territory. Nope, not by much. Not by much at all. Orphelius is just winning by reclaim. I mean, all this stuff here, this entire area plus this area here, that's all Orphelius' territory. So all this reclaim over here, everything here, like 500, actually about 800 metal worth of reclaim. Yeah, that's a lot of reclaim that belongs to Orphelius that Icons cannot get their hands on. And Icons in their hand, they actually have their commander. They have 520 metal right there in their commander. I'm a bit surprised that Icons has not gone for that. That would even out the economy. That actually might give Icons the advantage which Eikens does need. And right now, Eikens also has to deal with a lot of thugs, which means felons are most likely on the way, as are airplanes. Yeah, there's a felon on the way. And that will be a big problem once that comes up. Not so big as it would be if it weren't for the Zeus and Warriors, but still a problem. And against thugs like this, Rockos are a good idea. Though not a great idea. The Zeus is also not great, so you gotta kind of drain the shields. But to do that requires... Well, you can use, either use sharpshooters to bypass the shields entirely, which, actually, that's a good idea anyway. Like, building sharpshooters is something that Icons needs to do. A felon is on the way, and with all these thugs, a felon should be expected. Like, that is the next step for Shieldbot. When you see this many thugs, it's felon. This is a thug law ball. Felons are always going to happen. Icons is not prepared for that, though. And when that felon pops up, and there is that one felon already inside of Orphelius' base, 
once that gets to these thugs, it's gonna be a big deal. Though it looks like Eikens might actually have a chance to get rid of a few thugs before that happens. In fact, flanking the line very nicely. The thugs are really poorly positioned to deal with the forces coming in here. Eikens has a massive positional advantage here. Just cutting this, like, this entire line here. Just cut, flanking perfectly. Now finally, Ophelius is getting wise to it, but already losing three thugs before that happens, that was a huge loss. Orphelius, I don't know how they're gonna be able, I mean, they should be able to get back from this. They are still ahead in economy. They're still ahead in military. They're ahead in everything. But that was a big blow. And they're also going for the south, sorry, the no, center west side of the map. Going for the center west side of the map, and that will work pretty well, as well as getting the Ravens up. With that, I think Ikins is not gonna have an easy time. They're still able to get through, but they don't have the sharpshooter that they need. Don't have the sharpshooter, don't have, I mean, hammers would be the best idea. Rockos are a good idea, they are there. Zeus are a decent, decent idea for the health, but even then, it doesn't really matter when there's these many shields. Sharpshooter is the answer. And that is not what's happening at this point. Norphelia is nearly losing their calm, apparently, to the center west. So the center west attack, not successful. As is the north attack, Ikens is losing quite a lot of ground here. Quite literally losing a lot of ground. In fact, the southeast side of the map, the band is tearing that apart. As the convict comes in just to take it right away. Not even waiting for these metal extractors to go up. That is it. Like, Ikens is really falling behind. Like I said, the option here is really get sharpshooter. Actually, get sharpshooter like, two minutes ago. But yeah, that's always the thing. If you see this, although... Okay, Tick, really good idea. Missed the explosion, but still see the aftermath. Tick is a good idea, not the best follow-up though. And actually, Tick is not the best idea either. Right now, it's fine, there are no outlaws. But if there were outlaws, and there very likely will be at some point. Nope, no, just thugs. That's all there is. Oh, there they are, okay, there's the outlaw. Because that's the counter. That counter sticks out right. And Ikens, deciding not to even bother, throws in the towel. GG, and that will be game once Ikens actually hits the resign button. Or maybe they're just no, th are they gonna hit the resign button? Well, whatever. The point is, Orphelius has taken this game. And really, I think Sharpshooter would have done it. They would have thinned out the thug numbers, and then when the felon came in, it would have killed the felon. Just outright killed it. That would be it. The problem, of course, would have been these Ravens. It would have been still a challenge to make sure the Ravens didn't kill the Sharpshooter. But at that point, there wouldn't have been as much on the ground, so that would have meant that the Gremlins could have just taken out the Ravens. Pretty much at their leisure. Unfortunately, that was not the case, so Orphelius takes the game. That's pretty standard thug law felon attack. Nothing too fancy there. I mean, it's also a pretty standard cloaky setup. Zeus, the Zeuses are fairly, they're semi-standard, but yeah, Rocka Warrior, Glaive, that's pretty standard. And using the tick for area denial and for crowd control, also fairly typical. This was a fairly typical game. No hammers. No erasers, no sharpshooters, unfortunately. Sharpshooter is actually part of the standard anti-shield play. That was not used. And at this point, it really doesn't matter because Orphelius just has a huge amount of metal being pushed in here. Not sure why Ikens is waiting so long. Orphelius is just tearing this apart. I don't know why Ikens is not surrendering. I guess they're just busy entertaining each other in conversation. And that... Well, okay, yeah. Like I said, the game's over. Icons loses. There we go. Icons threw in the towel. Yeah, that was that was a pretty standard shield versus cloaky game, except the cloaky didn't quite do the right response. So shields took it. Also, maybe it would have been a good idea for Icons to go for a switch at some point. But yeah, losing the commander early on that was a big blow. Like that there, that really did do a lot of damage to Icons. But even without the commander, it was still possible to get in. It was just kill more units, get, maybe get more reclaim, and then work from there. Not a killing blow, but definitely a crippling one. Anyway, that was another game. I'll have one more for you guys in just a moment. It will be a game with Felthos against Lauri. And Lauri is not is actually hosting the tournament. So thank you, Lauri. Lauri is hosting the 1v1 tournament, and or and Faith Felthos is playing, as are Orphelius. The Sponge and Magman. Actually, Felthos and Magman are right now up against each other in the first round, but that's subject to change. That is totally subject to change. Probably won't be the case when Saturday rolls around, because probably more people will sign up. 
And for those of you watching, if it is any time before Saturday, September 20th, 2014, I think midnight of, well, midnight of Saturday, September, sorry, Friday, September 19th, 2014, in the Eastern North American time zone, from the looks of it. Anyway, if it's before that time, sign up. If it's after that time, then show up anyway, because sometimes people don't show up, and then you can sub in. Looks like the... Oh, never mind, sorry. It is midnight UTC. So for people in, say, Western North America, that would be at 1 p.m. So yeah, when you watch this, sign up. And that reminds me that in the future, I should probably do these hype casts on the Tuesday rather than the Thursday. I didn't realize how close of a time it was by the time people actually watch this, if they're watching it on YouTube, to when the tournament actually starts. Or rather, when the re registration is over, because the tournament is going to be starting at 10 UTC. So 3 a.m. Pacific Standard, and I think around 6 p.m. in Australia. Anyway, that is going to be on Saturday, but for now, just one more game. Fail Thoughts versus Lowry on Eye of Horus. That'll be up in just a moment, so stay tuned. <laughs> 